Welcome to Building the Future. I'm your host, Kevin Horick. You can check out new episodes of the show every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. If you missed an episode or want to get more information about the show, please visit buildingthefutureshow.com. SoupX, the Startup Expo, North America's premier startup conference, is March 6th and 7th, 2017, in sunny Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Affordably priced, SoupX is a two-day international conference featuring workshops, panels, speeches, a $50,000 startup competition, and over 100 exhibitors. For more information, go to sup-x.org. Welcome back to the show. Today we have Tyson Koska, founder of On Trajectory. Tyson, welcome to the show. Thanks, Kevin. Glad to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on the show. I, I think um, what you're doing is, is actually really interesting, and I, I love how you kind of still have um, like a day job, and then you're building a startup as well. And I'm not saying one's more important than the other. It's just I, like I think a lot of people are always told that you know they need to be they need to quit their day job and kind of just go and work on this thing. And I think some people like don't want to do that, can't do that. Or, you know, so I, I love that you're kind of doing how you're doing things. But maybe before we kind of get into what what you're doing, let's get to know you a little bit better and start off with kind of where you grew up. Sure. I, uh, I'm from northern Baltimore County. It's uh, uh, just north of Baltimore, Maryland. And uh, I grew up out in the, you know, sub, uh, rural slash suburban horse country of uh, Baltimore County. Sure. Okay. So what? So you grew up there. What did you end up doing? Like you went to university. What did you end up taking university? Well, um, I came to university as a slightly older student. I, I first spent four years in the military. I was a helicopter pilot back in the Desert Storm, Desert Shield days, wow. uh, which which was a which I needed because uh, I came from a, you know not a super rich family and with not a, too many opportunities. And the military helped me then pay for college, and I was through the GI Bill. Gotcha. So it took me about ten years to finish college, but finally managed to do it. Okay, so. You you went you were in the military and then you ended up going to college. What did you end up taking in college? I started out actually as an English major. I okay. uh, had had it in my my mind that I, I either wanted to write or to teach people uh, how to get excited about the written word. In the course of my studies, I uh, fell in love with philosophy, both okay. the logical part of it and the aesthetic part of it. And ended up being a dual major of English and philosophy. I, I will mention, though, that all through my high school years, I was very math and science oriented. So th- this, was, this was sort of a mid, mid-20s mid switch for me to, to go into the arts. Sure. Okay, interesting. So what kind of, what did you end up doing after you graduated university? Well, I immediately began teaching. I was uh, started out teaching seventh grade English as a as a long term substitute to sort of understand if I wanted to pursue a, a teaching certification. Uh, it turned out to be a horrible experience. The um, uh, that that's a hard age for anyone, sure. I I think, and to sort of just kind of throw myself in there and, and try to work with kids during that that time of their life uh, ended up being uh, much more than I had anticipated. And I refocused on adult education. I finally uh, ended up teaching as as what I thought was going to be a stopgap before going back and getting my doctorate uh, to teaching desktop applications. Uh, We're talking Microsoft Word, Excel, and began teaching uh, some more difficult classes, some networking classes, and through this teaching experience, ended up getting my Microsoft uh, uh, Systems Engineer certification, and from there have been in IT ever since. Okay. So before we kind of continue on, so how did you kind of get involved in IT? Were you self-taught? Did you kind of take some some classes, or how did you kind of learn how to do all that the tech stuff? Well, uh, that's 
a little bit of a long story. Well, not too long of a story. <laughs> I, uh, when I was about 13 years old, I um, decided to open a snowball stand. And so okay. uh, a kid down the street and I, we opened a snowball stand, uh, put it right outside. I come from a very small town. We sat outside. We sold snowballs for uh, the whole summer of 1981. Uh, and this was, you know, pretty close to the beginning of when personal computers became affordable for the for the regular person. Sure. I made uh, $500 that first summer. Wow. I ended up buying a uh, TRS-80, which, uh, you know, has been much derided. But, you know, for me, it was my own money, my first computer, taught myself how to program in BASIC, uh, started taking apart uh, programs that I would, you know, uh, back in those days, of course, they were on cassette tape and I would go in there and, and manipulate the code and, and try to learn what I could. And then, uh, so that was my first real exposure to IT, was, was completely self-taught. And I had always stayed as, as, a, as a real lover of, of computers, although, to be honest, I had never considered a career in it. And as I said, when I graduated college and I did the, the middle school teaching debacle, uh, mm-hmm. Uh, computers and, and technology was something very easily that I could that I could do without having to think much about it, uh, you know, for adult novices. And as I as I started that teaching experience, I fell back in love uh, with all of the with the with the, the, the creative logic of a computer. You can make it do what you want to do. You can make beautiful designs. You can make applications. It's up to your own creativity as long as you understand the logic. And and so, you know, I I really love both of those sides of developing software. No, that that makes a lot of sense. I I think that's really that's really awesome. So you're in you're in this IT or teaching. You're what did you kind of at what point did you kind of become a consultant and what do you kind of consult on? Well, I. After, after doing the adult learning, the teaching um, gig for a while, I, I sort of went, you know, you know that, old, that old maxim, those who can do and those who can't teach. Uh, I sort of wanted to do a little bit. I, I, I'd gotten into teaching without ever really doing. Uh, so it was a, it was a real uh, challenge, for, well, not a challenge, but a desire to, to get hands-on, to get dirty. So... Uh, after a few years and, and I got my certifications, I, I just started applying for jobs. Now, this was, this was back in the late 90s, and um, the, uh, the career field was, going, was just going crazy. People were getting uh, picked up with very little experience. And I luckily found a company that was willing to support me uh, to, to, to help flesh out my, my skills. Uh, and I did a lot of on-the-job learning and uh, just had a great – uh, great career, you know, to, just starting off learning the ropes and, and doing a little bit of, of everything in IT. I, I ran cables, but I also coded and uh, set up networks and, and project managed and, and eventually became a software architect. And, uh, and that's sort of where I am today is, is uh, architecting solutions for uh, banks and insurance companies and, and other kinds of large firms. Sure. I, I think that's awesome. And I, I love how you've kind of been on both sides of the table where you've kind of been in the trenches actually building stuff. And then you've been on kind of the, the business side, it's like for lack of a better term, right? It, where you're actually kind of, you know, doing the project management, you're, you're working with the people actually kind of in the trenches actually building the stuff. And I think, you know, and then you've kind of also dabbled in the network side. And I think that's super important. And I think you probably obviously like most people enjoy one side better than the other, but the fact that you've kind of played on both sides and you understand where both sides are coming from, I think makes you more rounded and you really understand kind of uh, as projects come to you and there's challenges. And, you know, sometimes you're like, I don't get why that side doesn't see it like me, but when you've been on that side, you can understand and you can relate to, you know, all members of the team better. I, I, I think that's exactly right. I, I, I can feel everybody's pain. Yeah. I have felt, I have felt uh, <laughs> everybody's uh, sort of, you know, needs and pain points over the years. 
that's a good characterization. Yeah, and I, I love that. Even like I've always tried to do that too, and I recommend to other people. It's like just because you don't do the other side of the equation, you should at least try it, even if it's just on your own time or on a small project or something, so you at least understand where they're coming from. And I think you grow as a person, and it makes your your life a lot easier or less stressful sometimes. Yeah, I, I mean, I would absolutely agree with that. Uh, people are so quick sometimes to become, only see something, you know, I, I don't want to sound cliche, but you'll see things from just one perspective. Sure. Uh, and, and really, it, it, it's, it's great advice that, that you mentioned. Go out there and, and do the other side. Try it out. See, see what it's like to be that, uh, play that other role. And you might hate it, but it's fine. You learn what <laughs> their pain points are, right? Like, I don't know. Like, I, I, I'm i the first person to admit I do not like project management. Can't stand it. I work with a great project manager, but, like, I've tried it. I don't like it, but at least I can understand where he's coming from, you know? <laughs> I, 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 I can tell you I started out this career hating project managers Okay. Thinking they didn't do anything. They were worthless. They didn't know what they were talking about. Now I love a good project manager, and I have so much respect for that career field. But I will, I will absolutely agree with you. I, I, I do not enjoy it at all. <laughs> yeah, but at least <laughs> it is but, a hard, it is a hard job. Totally. So you've been you've been consulting for a number of years. You know, you've worked with some really big name companies that everybody's heard of. At what point did you decide to do your own startup? And how did that kind of the idea for On Trajectory come to be? That was, uh, you know, it was one of these situations where I was looking for something and it didn't exist. Okay. Uh, I was, uh, my wife and I, uh, we lived, you know, we didn't have any children. We lived downtown in Little Italy of Baltimore. Uh, you know, one car, lived in a, a, a nice town home. And had a pretty simple life as far as, you know, things, complicate, life complications were concerned. Then uh, she got pregnant and we had to start planning for, you know, not just ourselves, but our child. And, and in, in, in fact, within uh, 20 months, she was pregnant again. We knew that we wanted to move out of the city. We wanted to have a little bit more space uh, for the kids. Sure. And all of a sudden, I realized that the sort of simple financial hey, keep an eye on your investments and sort of have in, have in mind uh, where you want to be in a few years, that simple sort of trajectory was not so easy to figure out anymore. Uh, how much house did we want to buy? Should I contribute to the kids' 529 plan or do I contribute to my 401k? Or do I, you know, there, there are all of these variables. Sure. and. And you can find you can find tools on the internet to answer any of those specific questions. You know, how big will my 401k be in 20 years, or uh, you know, how much college do I, how much do I need to save to reach X amount uh, in today's dollars for in a 529 plan for my kid's college tuition? Sure, you can find that. But understanding how all they how they all interact together, because if you look, if you're putting money into the 529 plan, you're not putting it into the 401k. So you need a tool or a method that you can that you can understand this this complicated trajectory. Add to that, hey, I want to I want to go on vacation, or should I not go on vacation, or I want to buy a house, or I want to buy a new car. These things uh, all affect. Your, your financial plan. And most of the tools that exist, you can put one number in, here's my salary, or, or, or and this I think is, is kind of crazy, you tell them how much you're gonna save for the next 30 years. Well, how can you, how can you possibly know how much you're gonna totally. save? And it's not consistent. You're not gonna save the same amount every month for the next 30 years. You know, sure. if, you, if you buy a new car, you've got a car payment. You buy a house, you've got a house payment. So. So in my in my quandary, I started just to, to make gigantic spreadsheets. I know a lot of people, having spent you know the lot of, past few years uh, trying to come up with a solution. Most people like me, out of out of their own frustration, they build these massive spreadsheets, and they're sure. fine for one person. Uh, my sped, spreadsheet became so massive and so complicated. Uh, and, and friends of mine wanted to start using it that it dawned on me 
you know, I cannot be the only person with this frustration. Uh, and that was the, you know, that was the impetus for it on trajectory. Sure. Or, or probably in a, a worse sort of situation, they do nothing and they just kind of wing their finances. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's right. So, <laughs> so the, the folks like me, they, they go in and do the, the spreadsheets. Most sane people just, uh, just say, well, this is, this is the mess. You know, what am I going to do? Sure. So, okay. So you, you built this, we'll get into kind of features and what, what exactly the product does for a second. But so you come up with this idea, how did you end up executing, um, getting the software built? Did you, did you code it yourself? Did you outsource the thing? How did you kind of get version um, one built? You know, right. Well, you know, since, since I have, have been programming, off and on since I was 13 years old. Sure. Uh, I was able, I was comfortable enough to, to build a prototype. Uh, and with that prototype, I took it to some other friends because, you know, I'm in the industry. So right. uh, I know, I know people that know people and uh, talked to some friends and, and said, you know, here's what I think is missing. And I'll never forget. I would have these conversations with people and they would say, well, that has to exist. That, that has to be there. I said, then show me, you know, do, do a search and, and find, find the tool and give it to me because I would love to use it. Sure. I would rather not have to build it. Uh, and so, um, you know, the right, the right mix uh, of folks came together, guys that have um, some, some good you know, database and background, uh, a backend experience, uh, background, and also uh, a member of our team also has some, some machine learning AI experience. Nice. So, you know, we were able to pull together a team that was, um, fairly, you know, fairly dedicated, uh, and, and get together a beta, which we ran for probably a year and a half, uh, before, oh, wow. you know, having any, anything official come out and right. And that, and so during that beta period and, and, and even today, uh, if you go to on trajectory.com w- very prominently in the bottom of the screen is a uh, feedback and feature recommendation section built into the UI. Uh, and we receive, we receive, Feedback every single day, features people would like to have, uh, of course, questions and, 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 and learning uh, items. Uh, but, you know, we have a pretty active community of folks that, you know, are helping us make the tool better uh, for everybody. Sure. No, I, I think that's great. And I, I love how you kind of used your existing network of people to actually build something. And the fact that you took a year and a half kind of while you're still working, right? Like, I want to be clear that you didn't quit your job to work on this. You're you're still, you know, doing the consulting role and and you're building this kind of, you know, maybe parts during the day or in the evenings and on weekends, but you're you're still working. Right. So and just to be clear, uh, uh, that I, you know, there was a, a huge necessity to keep my my consulting separate from from this um, this startup. Uh, not, not that there was any overlap uh, from a, um, not that I was delivering any sort of product like the one that I was building, but you know, it's 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 very important to keep your head in whatever you know sort of game you're in. So what I and since I traveled, there there was an advantage here. I would go to my you know job during the day, and when I would get back to my hotel room because I didn't have the kids to take care of. And my wife is wonderful. And, and, and she put up with my traveling for many years. Sure. Uh, I was locked in a hotel room by myself. So this was sort of like my, my lab, my, okay. my place where I could, I could experiment and come up with ideas, see what works. And, and that's where, you know, 99% of the website was developed was sitting on a hotel bed, uh, looking out the window and, 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 and coding <laughs> on a laptop. I, I love that. So let, let's get into kind of some of the feature set of uh, what On Trajectory does for people. You kind of covered it a little bit, but maybe let's dive a little bit deeper into it and, and kind of what exactly does it do for people? Right. Well, we had two, so two really key design goals that I was very passionate about up front. Okay. And, and of course, I, I've already mentioned a little bit about the, you know, the 529, 401k, sure. IRA, that sort of uh, the, 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 um, the uh, how, how, you know, what we're doing from a long-term financial planning standpoint. But the two key design points that, uh, that are still very critical, one is an extremely low barrier 
of entry. So when you first get an on trajectory account, you enter literally four pieces of data. How old are you? How much do you make per year? Have you managed to save any money at all? And are you saving going forward? Right. Now, that's not a lot of data. No. Nope. And, uh, you know, most financial planning tools require you to understand taxable versus tax deferred versus, you know, this or that. We don't ask any of those questions. We just want to know those four pieces of data. And we can actually draw a pretty interesting long-term financial trajectory based on those uh, four pieces of data because you know if you're a certain age we and and, and i'm talking us here uh, we know basically when you can start collecting uh, full retirement from social security right. we also know based on what you save per month we know about how much uh, your expenses are so we can make some some assumptions there we also know that people tend to cut back their expenses in retirement. So we make some, uh, make some assumptions there. So we, we have these, this whole series of assumptions that we use to show you something very quickly. But now this is a critical point and, and one that we're still, we're still trying to overcome. Okay. That's the beginning of your planning. That's not the end of your planning, right? That's getting those four questions. is really giving you a, a, a starting point that makes sense and one that gives you a firm foundation to actually start building out your personal, unique financial situation. So that's the second design point is how do I get from a super low barrier of entry? How do I also offer a tool that has got maximum customization to meet anybody's particular financial need? And, you know, of course, we we think we've got that right balance and on trajectory. So the assumption is after you go in, you answer those four questions, then you, then you go into the account tab and say, well, I've got an IRA or I've got a 529 plan set up or I, or I want to set one up in a few years for my kids. Uh, you go in and you say, what are your, you know, I've, I've got a mortgage or I've got a car payment uh, or I've got a spouse and here's my spouse's income, right? So, so the, the expectation is after that, that very easy entry, then you set it up uh, uniquely you know, to your own situation. Got you. Okay. And then I would say the last key. Well, no, go ahead. Should I keep going? Yeah, okay. keep going. I would say the last key uh, element. Uh, so those were my, our two guiding design principles. But then something that we, we think is, does not exist or we haven't seen a good example of it is a tool that engages with a person over time. So once you do that, you spend that time tailoring it to your own situation on trajectory lets you check in as often as you like uh, uh, indicate where you are from a uh, savings and investment perspective and then we adapt the trajectory based on uh, what you've entered now i don't mean to say we're changing your assumptions your assumptions are still drawn on the chart but what we do is let's say for example the stock market is on a is on a tear and and your investments have gone up uh inexplicably by 15 percent in a very short period of time we let you key in that value and then we just kind of draw a shadow line showing well if things kept going this is where you might end up but uh, we don't necessarily change what your plan is and the expectation is as the market goes up and as the market goes down and as you have a, a life emergency and you've got to tap your resources, but then you come back and you refill it, you're going to see that drawn, that accurate past will be drawn for you. You'll know where you came from and knowing where you've come from, that gives you much more confidence and much more clarity about where you're heading in the future. No, I, I, I totally agree with that. I think that makes a lot of sense. So I, I know right now um, you guys are, are free and both your plans are free. So what does kind of the free plan include? And then um, let's kind of cover the paid plan that's going to come starting in November. Yes. Yeah. We're, so we're, um, you know, like a lot of websites, we have sort of this freemium model where, you know, we want folks to get in. We want folks to use the product. And if they just have a very low need or if they just kind of want to check in once in a while see where they are and uh, be able to 
engage on a on a casual level that's that's what the free plan is for and it, you you can enter um you know a certain number of income streams you can enter in a certain number of expenses and a certain number of accounts that, sure. that you may have now the the paid plan is is for someone that's you know wants to wants a lot more clarity they've got you know a pension and a wife social security or a spouse of social security and they've got uh, you know they've got different expenses that they're that they're that they're budgeting for over the next uh, 5 10 20 years they've got lots of different uh, a lot of different uh, ways that that they want to do like a what if analysis or they they want to plan different contingencies so that for that, you know, we we do offer a premium plan, which will be uh, going live in November. It just allows people to get much more in depth with their with their financial plan. Sure. No, I, I think that makes makes a lot of sense. And and so, um, I'm I'm curious. Then, do you have kind of an average amount of time that you dedicate to on trajectory in a week, or does it kind of really range? Um, based on maybe if you guys are rolling out new features or you need to test stuff or or how do you kind of break up your week between you know the consulting and then the startup it's uh it's challenging uh, to, you know to be honest uh, sure uh, sometimes sometimes i will be lying in bed and an, uh, a feature idea will come to me and i'll literally not be able to sleep so i'll okay. pop up and i'll go downstairs put a pot of coffee on and my day will start at you know, three thirty or four o'clock in the morning, and I'll I'll get a few hours of work in before I I head off to the office. Um, another example of how how we get things done, uh, we plan weekend retreats. So okay. um, uh, we, uh, we, there's three partners, and, and the three of us will literally leave our entire life behind, get permission from our spouses and significant others, and we'll go to uh, another city and we'll get an inexpensive hotel room and we will literally lock ourselves in a hotel room and code for 40 hours straight. I mean, really? Uh, you know, we do what we have to do. Yes, yes. That, I, so I think that's uh, amazing. And and I know like I've, I've started to really realize over the last like few years that you need a huge support system, whether it's from your significant other or family or friends, especially as your life gets more complicated as you're, you get married and there's kids and whatever else, right, is going on in your life, that if you don't have somebody or like a few people kind of supporting you, that you just can't pull you, this stuff yes. off, right? Like, You, you can't, no. And, and, you know, and I really appreciate what you said earlier about you don't have to quit your job and walk away from everything and immerse yourself. And I, and I do believe that's true. But the flip side is you absolutely do need people to talk to about it, people that are encouraging, people that are in it with you. Um, and it, it, I'll, I'll tell you, it, 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 it has taken me much more work than I ever expected it to. But at the same time, the feeling of pride that you have when you have a product that you, that you think is helpful. And, it's, and, and I'll tell you, I, I get emails a couple times per week from people that say that, you know, that, that they're depending on us. They're so pleased that they found us and, and, and we're giving them a way to view their own future in a way that makes them feel comfortable and in a way that they feel like they have control over. And that's just a great feeling. Oh, it, there's like nothing better than when you know you're actually making a difference in somebody's life. Right. And, and when you get those emails, right. Cause I, I don't know how often you get them. It sounds like quite often, but you know, like, majority of people never actually tell you when they when they're happy with something but they'll tell you when they're not happy <laughs> right oh and, yes my, and i love getting my, that my inbox has right <laughs> yeah my inbox definitely has more more uh questions and suggestions uh for improvement than i have compliments but when you get those compliments i i'm really thankful i to be honest i braced myself to because I know how the internet is. I sure. know how people are. Uh, you know, we, we've grown up seeing trolls <laughs> and, yep. and uh, how it can be. But there are some very kind people out there that really appreciate uh, a tool that is helpful. And they'll take the time and, and compliment you and say so. And I'll tell you, if it, wasn't, if it wasn't for people actually voicing a thank you once in a while, I'm not sure I'd still be doing this. 
Yeah, uh, no, I I 100% agree with you. And it's interesting because like I do this show as kind of a side project as well. And there's days that you you don't or like there's weeks or months that go by where you don't really hear from anybody (laughs) about like like anything good or bad. Right. Like you just don't really hear anything. And then all of a sudden you hear like, oh, like somebody's like, yeah, I was on your show and I got the, you know, like a bunch of people reached out to me and you're just like, oh, awesome. Like, you know, see, it's almost like you need that reinforcement sometimes to keep you going in, in these things. Right. So I, I totally get that. And and yep. to your point, I, I love the fact that you're so open to taking customer and user feedback because there's so many people out there that are just like, nope, I know what the customer wants. But, and I'm sure that there's things that you've added to the product that you probably never even thought of that, you know, a cus- couple users said, you should really add this. You're like, yeah, I probably should. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and sometimes, uh, you know, customers will ask for something that's honestly crazy. But sure. sometimes they'll be so incisive and they'll say, why don't you just do this? And it will be an easy, something easy to implement. And I, I have, um, again, because we're a small team, uh, I've been able to implement for people a, a feature request within, you know, a day or two. I'll, uh, I'll, wow. I'll code it up one evening. I'll send, I'll send a, a note out to the, to the, to uh, the person that does our QA. We'll do a QA run. We'll promote it up through our environments and have it out, you know, within a day or two. And then I'll send a note to the user, and the users they're just amazed. Yeah. Uh, that. A, someone listened to them, uh, and, 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 and B, that, you know, you know, we were able to do it so quickly. Um, so, yeah, that is, that is also true. I, I think, too, because obviously you guys are still kind of early on in, in this thing, and you're just kind of coming out of beta into a paid, paid environment. I think a lot of people are scared to release stuff before, like, kind of how you guys did it. And I, I think the nice thing about it is when people – get on and they're kind of early adopters and you they start seeing their feedback make it into the product they people love that they have kind yeah. of like they input. become champions exactly that's right. exactly that's the best way to put it yeah like i think just involving people in that is is awesome from their end as well and i think a lot of people are scared to do that w- with their startup right and i love how you guys are doing that that's and you know it's interesting because if I, you know, I don't know how much of the sort of lean startup and the literature uh, that's out there, but um, things I think things are shifting in that direction where people will will take a chance and get something out there early, uh, which is a reaction to the sort of you know Apple computer and I'm not I'm not um, criticizing anyone, but sure. the Steve Jobs I'll tell you what you want uh, sort of perspective. So you know because. Because technology costs have come down so much and, and folks like me can, can have an idea and birth it, I think you'll probably see, or at least I hope you see, you know, a lot more people take a chance, build something, solicit feedback, and then really make something that's useful. I mean, the problem is if you spend thousands and thousands and thousands of hours and you never show anyone, well, when someone criticizes it, you're going to get defensive or you might you – might, you know, it might be so so solidified already in your mind that you don't want to change it. But if you do get things out slowly and, and reactively and, and you're answering a real need, um, then you've got something much more organic and something I, that potentially I think could be far more useful to people. Sure. No, I, I totally agree with you. And I, I think it's interesting too. You, you made an interesting point there like about um, – getting kind of offended, right? If you spend a bunch of time, like if you literally get an email from a client or, and and they say, can you add X feature and you literally take 24, 48 or 72 hours and you release it to them, they are not going to have crazy expectations that it's like, it does everything under the sun because like, right. But they can that's right that's right and and like if they do say no that's not really what i want you're like well i only spent maybe like a few hours or a half day <laughs> right like that's instead true. of like 40 or that's true. 400 hours on this feature right where you could say oh okay that's well right. they're like well can you tweak this a little bit and then you put in maybe a couple more hours you tweak it and you keep going and i think 
it's a lot more easy to swallow when people give you feedback on things that you haven't spent a huge amount of time on. I think that's a really good point. And, and, and something else that's really nice that I've seen happen, and I'll just use an example from, from on trajectory, obviously, because it's sure. on, the, on my brain. But we had a, a feature request where um, – so, so part, of, part of our ease of use – is that in, in on trajectory, you're always working in today's dollars. So if you've got a, you want to buy a car in 10 years, you don't have to wonder, oh, what's inflation going to do to car prices in 10 years? Right. You don't have to think about it that way. You just think about it and say, well, you know, my current car, I have a current car payment of 300 bucks and I want to buy a slightly better car. So let's say I'm going to, in 10 years, I'm going to have a $350 car payment. So you enter $350 in, in, you know, for 10 years from now. And so on trajectory, we'll go ahead and figure out that inflation. Well, that's nice from a certain perspective, but let's say you have a mortgage on a house. Sure. And your mortgage is, you know, my mortgage is 1200 bucks. Well, since we automatically adjust for inflation, that means our calculation engine, well, I should say used to, uh, our calculation engine would do 1200 bucks this year and then 1200 bucks plus inflation next year and then 1200 bucks plus two years inflation two years from now, which is clearly wrong, right? Because right. your mortgage does not increase with inflation. So, you know, we had a user say, gosh, it would be really helpful if certain expenses I could just freeze and they don't inflate. I thought, ah. you know what, that's, that's true. That's, that's really an accurate, that's an accurate uh, thing. And not only did it help him, it helped me. It helped me do some better financial planning. But the, in, the, in the long run, after I implemented that do not inflate checkbox, a user then came and said, hey, you know, healthcare is supposed to inflate at a rate higher than inflation. Why not, instead of just a checkbox that says do not inflate, let me set my own inflation for a particular expense. Well, since I had already implemented the do not inflate checkbox to give the user number two, what they were looking for was a much, what much less of a, um, a feature gap than it would have been. So I might not have been able to do it unless I'd already taken those smaller steps to get there first. No, I, I think that's a great point. And, and I think that that makes a lot of sense. Um, but we're kind of coming to the end of the show. So, Maybe let's close the show with mentioning where people can find On Trajectory online and any other kind of social media links you want to uh, mention for yourself or the company. Well, so, you know, it's very easy, www.ontrajectory.com. We do also have, of course, a Facebook page and a, 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 a blog and um, a few of, you know, um, uh, Twitter account. Uh, uh, these uh, our social pages are not quite as active as uh, major corporations is going to be uh, because we're spending most of our time, uh, you know, doing development, talking to our users, uh, and doing you know uh, some some marketing. I will also um, uh, I was going to mention. Oh, I just wanted to mention uh, that apart from the things that we've discussed, uh, the on trajectory. Our, our next iteration, our next big thing is yeah. um, that we're going to be integrating to, uh, or our, our hope is to be integrating to other uh, financial institutions. So uh, look for, uh, hopefully in the not too distant future, instead of users having to go in and update, remember I talked about that progress, that being yeah. able to update where you are we'll be able to get that information automatically. So uh, similar to, to a site like mint.com does where they can automatically get updates um, and, and, and sort of do the tracking for you. So we want to become much more uh, integrated into people's financial lives and we want to be able to get proactive. So if there's a, a big change, uh, we can let you know either on the upside or the downside so that you, know, you can be aware of those changes as they occur. That's great, man. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your uh, busy day to be on the show. I look forward to keeping in touch with you and, uh, you know, keep uh, building the future. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. I really appreciate this podcast and, and or the uh, radio show that you're doing. Uh, it's fantastic that you know you take an active, you know, an active look at all of these 
these, you know, these new future technologies and, and bring them to folks. So you're doing a great job as well. Well, thanks. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's always nice to hear feedback like that. So, you know, thanks again for doing this and uh, we'll keep in touch and we'll talk soon. Okay, take care. Great, man. Bye. Thanks for listening. The music for the show is done by Electric Mantra. You can check them out at electricmantra.com and keep them in the future.